Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Asus NovaGo. And at first glance, it just looks like a typical Windows laptop. And in some ways, that's exactly what it is. It has a 13.3 inch full HD display, six gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. But there are a couple of reasons why I was really interested in reviewing this device when Asus offered me the opportunity. It's one of the first three devices to ship with a Windows 10 on ARM operating system. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 CPU, which is uh, basically the same processor that you would have found in flagship Android phones from 2017. And it ships with Windows 10 S out of the box, which is a version of Windows 10 that's sort of designed to compete with Chrome OS for educational purposes. It restricts users to running applications from the uh, Microsoft Store and that gives you theoretically better performance, better security, a couple of enhancements at the cost of being able to sort of run any application that you would want. Now you can install or you can switch from Windows 10 S to Windows 10 Pro for free with this device, which allows you to install other applications that aren't in the store. But you'll notice that there are certain applications that still might not run because of the ARM based processor and that ARM based processor, while it's pretty fast for a smartphone chip, uh, there are certain things that are a little bit difficult to do on a Windows device. Uh, this model does have a 360 degree hinge. It allows you to use it in sort of tablet, tent, or stand modes. And it has a couple of nice premium touches, including this uh, fingerprint sensor here built into uh, the nice wide touchpad. It's got that full HD touchscreen display that I mentioned. The speakers on the bottom are pretty loud and clear for laptop speakers, although it does not have a lot of bass, which is kind of par for the course. Um, keyboard is nice and, uh, and sort of full sized here. It's not the most the, the most comfortable in terms of key travel that I've ever used, but it's not horrible. And it uh, it has function keys on the top, of course, for uh, toggling uh, or adjusting brightness, volume, and uh, Wi-Fi, and other settings like that. It um, sells for about $699, or sometimes a little bit less in this configuration. There's a, a cheaper version with, I think, 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage for about uh, $599. So let's go ahead and turn it on and I'll talk a little bit about performance, which is really kind of the feature that I think might be a little bit of a deal breaker. Part of that is due to the processor perhaps, part of it might be due to some of the limitations of the operating system. And I think this would be a laptop that would be hard to recommend even at a lower price. But right now, I think one of the main reasons to sort of look at it is the novelty. Now you do get a couple of interesting things with that Snapdragon 835 processor. It's being marketed as something that's a very low power chip. So there's a fanless design here, sort of silent operation, which is great. You get long battery life. Asus says up to 22 hours if you turn off the wireless and just watch videos. Uh, in my day-to-day -day uses, I'm seeing maybe more around 10, 11, 12 hours of sort of heavy work. And um, so that's pretty good for a device in this size, but you can find some Intel powered laptops that get similar battery life. It also has an integrated uh, SIM card slot and support for 4G LTE, which is not surprising because that's built into the processor. So that's, if you're looking for long battery life and you're looking for uh, connectivity uh, for the always on features, you've got, in addition to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you do have a SIM card slot, which allows you to, uh, to connect to the internet via cellular. So the SIM card slots over here, you pop it open uh, with a SIM adapter, and there's also a micro SD card reader inside there as well. So that's the SIM card. We've got HDMI, headset jack, power and volume buttons on the side where they really should be on a laptop or on a convertible notebook, because if you're flipping the screen all the way over and using it in tablet mode, you wanna be able to access those. On the other side, we've got two full-size USB ports and the power adapter. And as I mentioned, we've got a fingerprint sensor. So I'm gonna head log in just by touching that. Um, I find that the fingerprint sensor can be a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes it works perfectly and uh, other times it doesn't. I've registered the same finger twice and that seems to have helped a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and dim the screen a little so that it's easier to see. And let's just zoom in here. So as you can see, we've got a touch screen display. We've got the touchpad. Uh, out of the box, it is, uh, like I said, designed to run applications from the Windows Store. And there's some applications in here that I wouldn't necessarily have realized. So for instance, um, my favorite sort of quick and easy image editing application, Irfan View, is in there. So I was able to install that without switching uh, to Windows 10 Pro. Um, likewise, I had no trouble installing uh, Spotify. So I can listen to music. 
and Plex so I can stream music or movies or other things from my home network. And um, yeah, so in general, Windows 10S wound up being a little bit easier to use than I thought it would be. Now you are still stuck with the Edge web browser, uh, but there is the last plus pl uh, pl plugin, as you'll see right there. It was trying to prompt me to log in. Um, and overall, while Edge is not my favorite browser, it's a lot better than Internet Explorer. So it's not too horrible a limitation, I think, uh, sort of being stuck to running uh, this. Now, what I use a laptop for typically is opening a whole bunch of browser tabs in side-by-side -side windows. So what I'll do is I'll open one over here and use it for writing uh, in WordPress so I can update the website. And then I'll open a bunch of tabs over here into, including um, Gmail and Feedly for RSS and you know, take a look at other news sources. And what I found is that once you sort of get past four or five browser tabs open, uh, the whole thing starts to feel a little bit slower than I would like it to. Particularly if you're doing things like streaming media at the same time. So as we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and open the task manager. And you can see we're at 99, 98% CPU usage. So it's working, but we're sort of taxing things a little bit more than I would be comfortable with. Let's go ahead and switch this to HD. So we're streaming a high definition video here. I'm going to go ahead and mute the speaker. Put that in full screen mode. And you know, so far the computer's keeping up. Uh, so it's a little it's sort of tricky to demonstrate, but what I found is that things do just sort of get a little bit more sluggish the more browser tabs you have open um, and more things you try to do. Uh, so I've got Bing open here. I'm typing things into here. I'm trying to actually show you the thing that I find most annoying, which is here we go. Once you get to a certain point of running enough things at once, you start to encounter this lag where sometimes when you are typing, uh, so I'm not able to demonstrate this at the moment, but sometimes as you're typing, it will actually take a second for uh, the words that you type or the letters that you type to show up on the screen, which is something that I think is uh, not uncommon in older computers uh, from 10, 15 years ago, but something that I really just sort of haven't experienced much lately. And I'm kind of used to the idea that when you press the new tab button, it opens immediately. Uh, and if it doesn't, that means that it didn't register. In this case, sometimes you'll find yourself hitting a button or entering text and then having to wait to see if it shows up to uh, before you actually know for certain if it's registered so it can be a little bit sort of frustrating using this um, you notice it took a second there for instance after i hit uh, file explorer for it to show up i've got file explorer open i'm gonna go in here and do a little bit of image editing and you're gonna to have to check out the text version of this review to find out sort of a little bit more of, um, of my thoughts on this because eh, pretty much everything I'm trying to do right now seems to be working as if there were no problems with this computer. Single tasking wise, I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, if you were just watching a video, reading a web page, and so forth, I don't think you're going to encounter a lot of problems. But if you do the sort of work that I do, where you have a half dozen browser tabs open, you're editing pictures, you might be streaming music in the background simultaneously, you will notice that it starts to get a little bit sluggish and less responsive. Um, and for those reasons, I find it a little bit hard to recommend this at $699. It's even a little hard to recommend even if the price were to come down substantially because uh, I think it's not the sort of performance that you would necessarily expect from a computer in uh, 2018. Uh, I am excited still about the possibilities of Windows 10 on ARM. We will see faster processors in the future. Qualcomm's already sort of promised to deliver the uh, uh, Snapdragon 
850, which should be a sort of faster version of the Snapdragon 845 processor, which is designed for this sort of device. And, you know, I think seeing more competition is great. Uh, Intel does have low power chips. Its Celeron and Pentium uh, Gemini Lake processors are not much more power hungry than a typical uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon chip at this point, and upcoming Snapdragon chips might actually use even more power. So in terms of battery life uh, or low power consumption, there are Intel processors. Also the, uh, the uh, Cabby Lake Y or the upcoming um, um, Amber Lake Y, which are 4.5 watt processors that are based on similar architecture to Intel's um, core processor lineup low power processor is better performance. At a time when you can get that kind of long battery life, I think the only real advantage to going with something with a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor is that SIM card functionality. So if that's something that you're really looking for, you do tend to have to spend more if you want a laptop with 4G LTE cellular connectivity. They exist, but they usually are premium devices. And from that perspective, 699 is not too bad a price. Um, it's really just sort of in terms of performance that I, th that I find it problematic. Now, I haven't switched this version yet to Windows 10 Pro. I'm going to uh, do that a little bit later and, and do a follow-up video, maybe talking a little bit about that. But if you do so, you have access to 64-bit and 32-bit ARM-based applications, but 64-bit x86 applications or Win32 applications aren't going to run. So you get a little bit of a performance hit from emulating x86 architecture if you're running applications that aren't optimized for ARM, and you can only run 32-bit versions of those programs. So if there's applications that haven't been uh, made available in 32 that are 64-bit only, you won't be able to run them at all. So uh, again, it's an interesting device. I'm glad that I got a chance to test it. But without the backlit keyboard, uh, which I didn't realize I would miss as much as I did miss, without uh, faster performance, without the ability to run some of my favorite programs like Handbrake for video transcoding or LibreOffice, it's a little bit sort of tricky to use. Now I could use Google uh, Docs and Google Spreadsheets and other online things, or Office Spreadsheets and Office uh, uh, Online, so Word and Excel Online. Um, I'm not a Word 365 subscriber or Office 365 subscriber, but if you wanted to, there are versions of Microsoft's own Office Suite applications. If you're heavy into the Microsoft ecosystem and you're using their Mail app and you're using Microsoft's Office applications and so forth, then you know, this might be okay. It's sort of tricky to recommend as a primary device if you are going to stick with Windows 10 S. But as something that's competitive with a Chromebook is something that uh, if you don't need uh, video editing software or other sort of uh, CPU uh, and GPU resource intensive game things, if you don't want to play bleeding edge games, you could probably survive with Windows 10 and ARM and Windows 10 S. Uh, it's sort of like a Chromebook for Windows in, in that way. And the fact that you do have the option of switching to Windows 10 Pro is sort of nice. Uh, I think the main problem that I have is, generally speaking, the performance, and that is something that I'm very hopeful can be addressed in future versions. Um, you can see we can switch uh, via continuum here to um, sort of the, the touch-friendly operating system, but it still can be a little bit sluggish at times. And of course, you do have fairly large bezels. Screen rotation is not as fast as it might be. I can switch off tablet mode here and switch back to a more typical Windows environment. Um, so I want to like this device, I really do, but at 3.1 pounds at $699 is a little hard to recommend. And because of the sluggish performance, if you wanted to use it as a work machine, it's a little bit hard to recommend. If you are looking for something that has extra long battery life, you tend to only run one or two applications at a time, it's not awful. Um, but it really makes me more excited, I think, about the future of Windows 10 and ARM as ARM becomes more competitive, uh, and assuming Microsoft sort of makes it more possible to, uh, to run different sorts of applications. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get 64-bit x86 emulation support, for instance. I don't know if you'll ever be able to run x86 applications or Win32 applications as quickly as you can on a device with uh, an x86 processor. 
there's a lot of things to sort of be wary of. So there's a lot of caveats. I'm trying to be optimistic, but it's a little bit difficult. Uh, you can find more details at lilliputing.com about the Asus Novago. Again, this uh, review is mostly just talking about my experiences using it with Windows 10 S. You do get the ability to run different applications if you switch to Windows 10 Pro. I just haven't done that yet. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, hit up lilliputing.com and leave them in the comments. I'd, uh, I'll try to answer them if I can. Um, I want to like it. I want to be excited. Uh, I still kind of am because I like to see more competition in the chip space, but the first generation of devices based on my experience so far is overpriced and underpowered. And um, yeah, so that's the Asus Novago. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.